Hey, what's going on guys? It's Brainbean here again. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at a new monitor from Pixio. Now, if you haven't heard of Pixio, it's because they're a newer company that was founded in 2015. And essentially their mission statement is to bring more affordable panels to the market by cutting out the middleman and just selling direct to consumer. Now, all of this sounds good when reading it on a website, but when you actually get your hands on the panel, that's where things really start to matter. Now the product we're taking a look at today is the Pixio new PX277 monitor. Now this monitor has some pretty impressive specs, especially when you consider the price. This is a 27 inch 2560 by 1440 monitor with 144 Hertz refresh rate. It has a thousand to one contrast ratio and a six millisecond response time. But what really caught my interest is that it's an IPS panel and this monitor only costs 400 bucks. So when you put all of those together, this is where the monitor really starts to get a bit interesting. So when I got my monitor in, out of the box, you do have to do a little bit of assembly on the stand. It comes in two pieces. It's a relatively basic stand. The pieces are made out of metal and they fasten together with just a single screw, fastening the base into the little arm part there. It does use a single screw that doesn't have the little thumb pin screw on there, so you do need to use a screwdriver, and then it fastens to the back of the monitor with just four additional screws. The stand itself, all you can really do is pan it forward about five degrees and pan it upwards another 15 degrees. You're not gonna be able to turn this into a portrait mode or do anything like that. That's pretty much all you can do is just pan it forward and backwards. It does have a Visa mount on the back and I highly recommend if you do decide to go with this monitor to do the Visa mount because the stand is pretty much worthless at this point. There's not really that much you can do with it unless you wanna have your neck craning down to look at the monitor you're definitely gonna to want to invest in a decent Visa mount. Now the monitor is also advertised as having very, very slim bezels. And while that is the case, the plastic around the monitor is very thin. There is an internal bezel as well inside the screen. Now it's only about three millimeters thick and it runs all the way around the monitor. So when you add that to the actual bezel, it's still only about four millimeters thick, which is relatively thin, especially when you consider the price. It didn't bother me personally, but that's something to consider because they don't really talk about that internal bezel when you look at the specs on the monitor. As for some additional specs, the monitor does come with speakers. They're pretty terrible, but I would guess that almost all of us are not gonna be using the speakers built into the monitor anyways. It didn't bother me at all because of course I'm running it through my audio interface and have some really nice speakers set up, so I wouldn't be using it anyways. But if you're someone that's considering that, and eh, this is not gonna be the monitor for you, but really I don't think any of us use speakers built into the monitors anyways, so that's one that you can just kind of throw away and not worry about. Now, as for connections to the monitor, you do get a single DVI-D and display port, as well as two HDMI inputs. And you'll also find on the back some audio INOs as well. And it does come with a gold-plated display port cable, as well as just the regular power cable. Now, as for the panel itself, mine arrived just fine. It doesn't have any dead pixels or anything like that. I thought the colors looked really good, especially on that IPS panel. I did a little bit of color calibration out of the box to get that perfect look, but that's pretty much gonna be the case with any display that you buy. Now, the 144 Hertz refresh rate on this guy definitely looks really good. I tested it playing games like Doom and Wolfenstein, and the gameplay experience was really, really good on the monitor. I have to say that overall, my opinion on the Pixio new PX277 is actually way better than I thought it was going to be. I expected to get just kind of what you would expect for 400 bucks with these specs. You know, there's you would think there's gotta be a catch. And when I was using it, I feel like I was being a little bit extra overcritical on it just because I was looking for something to be wrong there. Now the monitor does come with FreeSync. It's not a G-Sync monitor. And I think that's gonna be kind of one of the drawbacks of it. But again, G-Sync costs a lot more money because of the technology from Nvidia. They have to license it out to the different display manufacturers and it makes the monitors more expensive. Now, I've tested mine with my GTX 1080 and everything has been working just fine. I haven't had a lot of screen tearing or anything weird like that. It does require you to do a little bit more setup to get it exactly where you want it. But overall, using my 1080, playing at 1440p on this nice IPS panel, getting those 144 hertz, everything actually worked out a lot better than I would have thought. 
So overall, I'll have to say guys that if you're looking for an inexpensive way to bump up to 1440p, to get that 144 hertz for that ultra smooth gameplay, and you want an IPS panel, which for me was a big deal, because when I do video editing and things like that, I don't wanna do it on a cheaper TN panel. I really need the nicer colors. And this display gave that to me. So if you guys are looking for a budget option for 1440p and 144 hertz, I really recommend this monitor a lot more than I thought I was gonna be able to do that. I'm actually maybe even thinking about picking up a second one for myself as well. That's it for the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I am gonna be bringing more monitor reviews to the channel very soon. So let me know if that's something you guys wanna see down in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, of course, you can give it a big thumbs up to let me know how I'm doing. And if you're new here on the channel, hit that subscribe button because I've got a lot more videos coming for you in the near future. You can also follow me on Twitter at BrainBeamGaming. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.